How's it going lads and lassies? Coach Javi here and today's video is going to be very, very special. The number one question I get asked on my channel in every single video is, Coach Javi, how are you so good looking? But the number two question I get asked is, how did I make that wall, the rebounder that I use in most of my training videos? So I'm going to go in detail, I'm going to show you exactly how it's done from start to finish. And um, hopefully it's easy enough for you and it'll be pretty fun along the way. So we're going to go to Lowe's real quick. We're going to purchase all the stuff and then we're going to come back here and actually start building it. So off to Lowe's. So we're at the hardware store. Step one, we have to buy the materials. Most important part of the wall is the wood. So if you go to your local hardware store, you'll find pieces of wood that should already be cut in certain sizes. So this one is... Two feet by four feet, it's $18, and uh, we're going to need two of these bad boys. All right, so these are going to be the actual wall, and we're going to cut one into the legs. Now we're on to item two. So next we need some corner braces. So these are six inch by one and one eighth inches, and they're about 378 each. We're gonna get four of them. These are gonna go on each side of the wall, on both of the legs. We're gonna have two of them on each one. And we're gonna get them down with some bolts. And that is the next item that we're going to. All right, uh, we're gonna use bolts instead of screws, just because screws start getting loose after a while, especially the more you hit it. So hopefully these will be a little bit more sturdy. So we got um, 5 16 by two inches. And we're going to need 24 of these. So I would get 25 to 30 just to be safe. We're also going to need a smaller size just in case these are a little bit too long. The 5 8 16th by 1 and a half inch. Um, just in case as a backup. And obviously with the screws you're going to need the, uh, the nuts. And these are just 5 16. And these should fit on, uh, on the bolts. So this part is up to you. But... I like to have the wall be black just because it's simple and it looks clean. So what we're going to use is Valspar Project Perfect Paint and Primer. It's good for indoor, outdoor, and it works on wood. So this is going to be good for the wall. And I think this is about four bucks a can. We're going to use about three of these just to make sure we have enough for it. But again, this is optional or whatever color you want to paint it. You can use whichever color you want. That's up to you. And I think that's it. Another completely optional item is a handle. If you want to be able to carry it pretty easily, you're going to need a handle. Um, otherwise, it's going to be kind of awkward to carry it, so you can use one of these bad boys. But if you don't have $125 to spend, you can just get the smaller one. So <laughs> the smaller one is it's called a utility pull, six and a half inches, and it already comes with the screws to mount it on. And we'll show you how this makes it a lot easier to carry and move the wall from exercise to exercise. So we need to make sure we round out the edges of the wall because if you keep them how they are with the wood, you're gonna get splinters every time you try to move it. So you need to sand it down. We actually have the sanding machine, so we just get some of these sanding sheets and these will do just fine. If you don't have the machine, you don't need these. You can get these little sponges and you're probably only gonna need one or two of these. Um, and this is just to round out the corners to make sure that when you're picking it up, you don't get any splinters. All right, so that concludes the shopping portion. Um, after everything, we have to calculate it because we bought like some Snickers and we bought some other stuff that wasn't part of the actual materials that we're gonna use. Um, but I'll put the total up right here, right there. That's the total that we spent on all the materials. Now keep in mind, if you actually wanna buy one online, these things, the cheapest I could find a wall was like 300 to 400 dollars. This is a lot cheaper. It'll work exactly for what you need it for. It's gonna be durable and it's gonna give you the sense of happiness that you built it yourself. So now we're actually gonna go and build it. Hopefully we got everything and uh, I guess we're off to build it. So we're back, got all the stuff. I think we got everything. Hopefully we didn't miss anything. Uh, so we're gonna run through really quickly what we got and uh, then we'll get started. So. We got the most important pieces, which is our, our actual wall itself. So we got the plywood, 
two pieces because one piece is going to get cut in half. We have four of these corner braces, our nuts and our bolts. We got our handle to be able to carry it and we have our paint and primer that we are going to use to color it. So I think we got everything and um, let's go off to building it. All right, so step one, we have to cut one of the pieces in half. So pick whichever piece you want to be the legs and we're going to grab a straight edge a sharpie and we're just going to make a diagonal line straight down the middle and that's going to give us our two legs so close enough now we're going to cut it straight along that line that we marked we got a hand saw we're just going to go straight down this line and cut this piece into half which should give us our legs Just like that, we should have two pieces that are gonna form the legs of the wall. So one of the adjustments I wanted to make this time around was the legs are a little bit too long. And it can kind of get annoying when you transport it from place to place. So what I'm gonna do this time around is, instead of leaving it this long, we're gonna just trim it down just a little bit, cut off a little bit of the tip, and it should work just as well. So there's no perfect distance. This is all just preference. We're going to maybe measure it and we'll just trim each leg to that distance. So we're probably going to do around 21 inches, probably 20 to 21 inches. Again, it's all preference, but um, we'll measure about 21 inches here. Make a little mark. So make sure it's straight. And all we have to do is simple line there. We'll do the same on the other leg and then we'll just cut this right there across that line and it should give us a little bit less length so that it's not so long and it's not so uh, bothersome when you're trying to carry it around and take it from place to place. So we got the front piece here and we got the two legs here they're gonna attach like this. This is going to be the back of the wall. So here are the two legs. This is kind of how it's going to look. So what we want to do is we want to make sure we have the exact same amount of distance from the end of one side to the first leg as we do on this side as well. We're going to go about a foot inside on each side and we're going to make a little mark. Foot. So make a mark there. That way we know these two legs are the same distance from the ends so that they're not lopsided here. So that's where our leg is going to sit right there. From there, we're going to use these two braces. And now for the braces, we're going to put two on each side. So we have to make sure that the two braces are the same distance from the ends so that it's not lopsided, it's giving equal support to the leg. So we calculated about six inches from the ends should be pretty good. And again, this is just up to you, whatever preferences you have, but I think six inches should be good enough to make sure it's even and it's providing the right amount of support. So that's how it's gonna look. So now that we've measured off six inches from each side, and now we're gonna mark the holes where the bolts are gonna go. So again, just line it up with that little mark that you made. So there's the three holes right there on each side. So now we know exactly where the bolts are going to go and I'll do the same thing on this side. <laughs> Oops. It's time to get our power drill out. Let me pick this up. And um, we're literally just going to drill through the little bracket holes that we made since we should already have them all lined up. We've drilled all the holes, now we're just tightening up the bolts with the nuts. So because you have the holes, this should line up perfectly, exactly where it's supposed to be. And then, you just twist and turn this thing until it goes all the way in. And hopefully, these are going to be a lot more durable than regular screws because with the amount of wear and tear that this thing is going to take from just being hit every single time you use it, especially if you're using it every single day, with regular screws they tend to come loose. So hopefully with these bolts, it should last a lot longer. 
should be a lot more durable and it's just better overall. So what I'm doing for these inner ones right here, all four of them, is these, the regular sized ones, are a little bit too long so that when they come from both sides, you're not going to be able to put them together because they're going to collide right here. So if you use one of the smaller ones that we got, though I believe these are one and a half inch, um, on the bottom piece right here, and then you use the regular size one on this side, they won't actually collide once they come through the wood. So that's what I've done on this one here. And um, that's what I'm going to do on all of the little inside ones so that they can both fit at the same time. So the final piece of the actual assembly is the handle. Um, so the handle usually comes with its own nail, so we're just going to screw these on. We're not going to mark these, we're just going to kind of guesstimate, eyeball it, and hope for the best. the assembly part of it got the handle on here to carry it so when you want to transport it grab it by the handle just like this you walk carry it I like that the legs are a little bit shorter because what we used to have what we used to have was this and that was a little bit too long for me so cutting off cutting that off is nice all the assemblies on there, Ugh. these aren't going to actually affect the ball when it hits it because these are too small, so we don't have to worry about these. And when we spray paint it, it's going to be nice and black. Everything is going to be the same color. It's going to look really nice. And uh, the best part is, because of the way that you cut it naturally, when you just flip it over, it's got an angle. So when you hit the ball against the wall, it naturally will pop up and give you that perfect little flighted ball. So now all we have to do is sand it down and make sure that the edges are rounded off. All the corners need to be sanded properly just so you don't get any splinters. And then we apply the spray paint on there. Let it dry for a few minutes and then put on another coat. From there it'll look pretty, it'll look good. And uh, when we're done with that, then we can really test it out and see how it does in real world settings. So we're going to go on to the sanding real quick, spray painting, and uh, and then we just let it dry. Officially done my friends, now we just have to play the waiting game. Apply a coat of paint, gonna wait a little bit, apply another one, but that, that's it basically. So we're gonna let it dry and um, we'll come back when it's done. Every time you two are getting rough, my mind just sounds like shy and love, but it says no, 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 no. Just no, 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 no And every time I see him with you My heart sounds like Shia LaBeouf to No, 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 no No, 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 no,